Howdy again, both Toms and model kit collectors. So we have volume four, the latest volume of the Blue Nightmare Serga story, which I believe was a video game originally on the original PlayStation. So the box says this volume four came out in 2020, and this is number one in that collection. There's only three robots in the collection. So the second one is called this Funny Devil, which looks like a What's it called? A fatty. It looks like a fatty. And then it's this thing called Calamity Dog. Really, it looks like nothing else at all. <laughs> so, and then this is this one where today we're gonna build it called the Rection Rectionetter. Okay, right. Uh, there's some landing posters in these things, usually with some additional parts. So, let's take this thing open and take a look. See, and then. Uh, couldn't find any information on this robot. MEHQ just calls it an armored trooper. Not even experimental or what it's from. So I have no idea. This little piece of gum from 2020, huh? It's the end of 22. <laughs> I'm going to try this gum. I'm going to probably get sick from this, but... Mm. I'll go with a Bandai gum. It tastes like soda or something or some sort of fruity flavor. Alright, so if you haven't watched my other model kit builds from this Blue Knight stuff, Bandai makes the best model kits. No glue is necessary, it's all friction fit together, so you can take it apart if you want or repaint stuff. And I find the instructions make sense. So, to save time, what I do is I just cut all the pieces off these sprues, put them into bins, and then I just open up the instructions and put them all together. I don't think I'm going to repaint any of these parts because it's black. Hopefully the clippings won't, won't look too bad, but we'll see. Let's see, it looks like there's at least one part that's painted. This, this head part, it seems. And there's also something here. Ah, oh boy. It's nice that, nice that, that this painted because uh, I would have a hard time painting that. Even though those are raised surfaces, even with a paintbrush, the, you'd see the brush strokes. So this is really nice to have done by uh, the brand. And then this one random piece is painted like a metallic metal, gun metal. I have a suspicion it actually goes right in here as a slot. That belongs right in there, so very nice. All right, no additional paint on this or this. This is actually uh, the swirly metal plastic. You can see the swirls in it. I'm not a really big fan, but this isn't as bad as silver swirl. Sorry, I lost focus. I'm not looking through my screen. All right, the black is not an issue. I like to keep the black sprues in case I need to melt an antenna for one of my cars. It looks like there's not many trees. This should be a pretty fast build. So let me uh, let me come back here. I'm gonna fast forward it four times, and then if you want, you can forward it, fast forward it even more, or slow it down using the YouTube settings.
was it was a pretty fast build. Uh, there aren't that many parts. It doesn't even have a weapon. Never mind a pilot. But oddly, I don't know if this is because it's the latest kit I've built. This is my favorite one so far. This is such a strange mecha design. You know, it's so un Votoms. Uh, you know, the only similarity is the fact that it has a cockpit. But again, there's no figure. So it's a real shame that there's no uh, figure because that cockpit's pretty cool. Look at the seat. It looks like an octopus or something. So, yeah, a lot of these parts I think I'm going to repaint one day uh, because they're separate. Like this little ring is separate and that little thing is separate. I think maybe I'll paint them red one day to match the uh, what's going on up there. And this looks like a jet engine thruster. Yeah, there's a lot of separate pieces in here that would lend themselves very easily to be painted. All right, so uh, the only things really left over are just two extra hands. There's two pairs of fists. I mean, there's one pair of fists and one pair of open hands. I just have one of each on them. And then this little thing here is a, a peg stand thing, and it can go up in this slot here. I don't really pose these in flying poses, but there, you could put a peg in there and have them flying or whatnot. But for now, I'm just going to leave it off because this guy can stand pretty well. Uh, all right, so you saw the cockpit open. That's one point of articulation. And then there's a bunch of hoses in there and... Uh, you know the controls like a dashboard or something there's even like a bunch of structural ribbing I'm not sure if you'll see it maybe now a bunch of structural ribbing on this piece here it makes it look pretty interesting and I like how when it's closed you still see all this outside stuff they're like I don't know if these are like thrusters or what this little vent here and there's like an antenna or something or maybe there's a grab handle I'm not sure all right, uh, in the back, yeah, there's a whole lot of detail here, a bunch of greeblies, almost like a Star Wars design, vents, controls, whatever, grab handle, and then the shoulder here. So the shoulder is interesting. There's nothing actually in the torso. It's just all in the arm. This ball peg is part of the arm, which is pivots here for the shoulder. So the shoulder can pivot on this gray piece, but that gray piece is a ball peg, so it can rotate and get some butterfly effect and all that stuff all right uh, so the elbow it's a ball peg as well so you know rotating and a bunch of angling can occur yeah that's the upper elbow part but here there's actually a hinge inside this forearm and so now you can bend that and so you can get a lot of what a bend look at that I mean this is a robot and that thing can bend more than 90 degrees it can almost touch its own shoulder so that's the best articulation I've ever seen. It's actually pretty cool. And then some hose details again. Pretty neat. And then uh, the hand is just a ball peg. So not too much articulation. It collides with the armor. All right. Okay, so the hip is an interesting design because the, the hip ball peg isn't really captured by the, the thing. See? It just comes right out. It's not inside the torso. And it only pivots on this peg here. This little round thing is just a slide in this slot here. So let me put that back in. So there's like a drop down forward effect, you know, in that hip. And then that ball peg there will allow a whole bunch of articulation in, out, rotate, all that stuff. So that's good. And then the knee. It's just a, oh, it is a double joint. I didn't even realize it. So yeah, again, it's clearly kicking its own butt. It'll even kick its own shoulder. That's crazy. The articulation on this guy is just insane. Okay, so stringing that leg out. And then the foot, you can see there's a just a ball, a peg with a ball going into the foot. But the top of the peg inside this uh, shin, there's a pivot. So it's, it can pivot forward and back, and then the foot on the ball will have some rocker and some pivot of its own. So you can get a decent amount of articulation in that foot, but it does tend to collide. These hoses are rigid, so they collide with the, uh, the shin armor. So pretty thin feet, and this is the only Votom that I've seen, I think, that has no indication of like dr a drive system. Like there's no wheels or anything indicating that it can scoot along the ground. The only thing I see is like this thruster up here and that's it. This right? It's kinda weird. 
Maybe this just is only like a running robot or something, and maybe that's why it has so much articulation because it's meant to run. It's really cool. It's it's its design is really unique. I don't know what to best describe it as. It's kind of like a beetle, but also for some reason it reminds me of like Mike Tyson, <laughs> like a boxer. It's all squat, you know. It's all squat, but it could destroy you if it wanted to. So it's uh, it's it's really neat. So the nice thing about uh, these Bandai things, I think the peg system is all universal, like these hands. So these are obviously came with this guy, but I have another one here. This is a uh, called Warrior. It's from uh, I think Volume Two. Hold on, let me let me just check. No, my bad. It's from Volume Three, and it's the Warrior. I did paint this one because it had raw swirly silver plastic so I didn't like that and you can still see you know where I sanded it and all that stuff okay but anyways what I'm getting at is this hand let's see if this hand will fit inside of this guy and we can have this guy now carry a gun because the gun is a it's a peg you know oh no the warriors are totally it is a different design my bad this is a peg system let me go find a different bow toms from this uh, Blue Knight series with with ball peg hands. Alright, I got this Berserga here and uh, it has the ball peg hands. Uh, they look very similar. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's uh, the same size. So, let's take this. Pop this in here. Yeah. You know though, it is much looser. So, although it looks the same, it's actually, it's quite loose. You would have to use some sort of putty for that to be rigid uh, or better. So it is a real shame that this guy didn't come with hands that can hold a gun. Ideally, I mean, look at this, look at this hand. It looks like a fist anyways. So I don't know why it didn't just come with black versions of this. So it looks like a fist, but it could still hold a weapon. Maybe this is just a boxing robot. Again, Mike Tyson. Alright, so I am going to have to put this back here. I was thinking that this guy has a spike shield, Berserga, that maybe he doesn't need a gun, but it won't fit anyway, so. Alright, well, I'll have to try with some other robots later on. Uh, let's just put this uh, fist back in. Yeah. Okay, uh, I will show some Takara Tomi Botoms here. I got these a lot before the model kits. This is called a diving beetle, and this is the most similar one that this reminds me of because it's strange, uh, curvaceous kind of face. So uh, the Scarotomies are great. They come mostly pre. The figures are pre-assembled, but you might have to add some armor plates or something here or there. This one has a funky hand, so I don't think I, I can fit that onto uh, this guy. No. Diving beetles are unique, so I'm gonna just leave that alone. Plus, he does, I feel like it does need a weapon. And let's see, this is a, I think it's got a purple bear. Let's see. Now, I can already tell the ball peg in this Takara one is way too small compared to the model kit one. So, and I think the purple bear is a boxing. Uh, Rotoms as well, so it's almost like these two might box each other or something. Assuming that's a boxing robot, there's no information on this one. Whereas the other ones are kind of like warriors, uh, you know, because they have weapons, so they actually fight with weapons. Okay, well, let's uh, I guess get the spin coaster and try to fit a few up here. You'll see this scope dog style is but a really small figure. And the model kits, these Berserga and this guy, these, these guys are pretty tall here. Hold on, let me get the camera at a different angle. So 
So I am a little curious, you know, maybe you're curious how tall these guys are. Well, you know, this Berserga is like 10, 10 and a half, maybe 11 centimeters with that the hairdo there. But this black one here is around 10, a little over 10 centimeters, a little over 4 inches with the antenna included. So, alright, they're, they're relatively small action figures slash model kits. Alright, I guess that's enough for comparing to other mechas or other Rotoms. Let's let this guy spin on its own. Get this background out of the way, it's kind of distracting. But we'll leave this little line drawing. Alright, yeah, very cool. I like this one a lot. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. And I'll see you in the next uh, model kit build for these Rotoms. Take care now.